Hello and welcome back to the Colorado Color Company YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making a shot glass using some ruby slippers, a new color from North Star. It's a pomegranate based sparkle striking color. So here I'm going to begin with some 16 mil solid rod. I'm just going to clean up this end first using the tweezers just to kind of get the junk off there from the last time I used it. Then I'm going to touch it up with a little pick and roll here and just make sure it's got a real nice taper and it's ready to do a seal. Now I'm cleaning up some 6 mil that's going to be the handle for this. So there I've attached them and now I'm going to take it to the roller after I let it set up in my hands for a little bit. And the object here is to get it straight where it's glowing hot. And then we're going to straighten where my left hand would be once that spot starts to set up. And it's going to leave us with a really nice centered piece of glass to start working with. This is eventually going to become the base of the shot glass. Shot glasses traditionally have a nice thick base, a little bit of weight in the bottom to keep them standing upright. So now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean up the other side. So when I go to add this clear base, I have a nice clean piece of clear to start with. There it is. And this thick of rod can be a little shocky, so I am going to pop it in the kiln and preheat it to 1050 degrees. Next I'm going to flare out some blow tubes using the Scott Griffin True Flame Working Jacks and the C3 roller. I'm just going to flare these to the size of the tubing that I'm going to attach to. The rollers and the jacks make really nice flares. Super quick, super easy. So now that I have that prepped, I'm going to take some measurements using the metal calipers here. I'm going to try to replicate close to the size of the shot glass that I've made previously. The metal calipers are nice. You can touch them to hot glass. They don't melt. They will be available on the site for anybody interested in grabbing a pair. So now I'm going to grab the ruby slippers. Here I have a little chunk. And this chunk actually is a little thinner than I would start with. It's just what we had sitting around for testing. So I'm actually going to have to gather this a little bit and expand it out to the shape I want. Normally when I make these shot glasses, I'll choose something that's close to the bottom diameter of the shot glass so I don't have to manipulate the glass as much but in this case I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna gather it to the size I want and now I'm just attaching the flared handles and this one didn't go as smooth as I would have liked it you can see it in my face <laughs> making a little stinky face there but you know, we're just going to roll with it. That's part of blowing glass. Not everything goes as planned. Sometimes it's like skateboarding. You got to learn how to fall. I will fix this here in a sec. Once I get the other handle on the other side, I'll be able to jump back over this seal and rework it. But for now, it's going to do the trick. So here I'm just adding a little earplug to the other side. So when I do this seal, I can have some air pressure. And that will also help the seal come out a lot better. That first seal is the hardest because you're going off the claw grabbers and there's no air pressure. But there you can see I got it nice and hot. I'm able to give it a little puff, even it out, throw it in the L Marver, shape it a little bit how I want it. And then I'm gonna throw it back on the roller and just make sure everything's nice and straight. And you can see that second seal came out a lot better. You can also see here that 
the pomegranate's starting to turn clear. If you've ever worked with pomegranate, the base for the ruby slippers, you know that while you're working it hot, it's clear, and then it's gonna take about an hour in the kiln to strike back to that rich red color. Here I'm going back and I'm just reworking that first seal that I was unhappy with. Can't win them all every time, but you can go back and fix mistakes sometimes. And now that I have air pressure, I can get that seal worked in really nice. And we're back to the roller again. I love these rollers, keeps me working on center. If you can keep that center through your whole project, you're gonna have a lot better success. Here I am using the metal calipers. What I'm doing here is seeing how far I have to expand this glass out to be about the size of the bottom of that other shot glass. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little heat base in and I'm gonna ex gather the glass a little bit and expand it out to that size that I need it to be at for the base. And you can see there, I've gotten it hot. I'm gonna add a little air, give it a little expand. And I'm not trying to take this whole piece of tubing and do it at once, I'm doing one side here you can see I just made little adjustment checking it with the calipers now I'm gonna bring that other side out to that diameter to match it and this is all about little steps you don't want to try to take this and do it one big heat you want to do little steps towards your shape I'm just heating and gathering and blowing out to get near that base shape of the shot glass. Once again, using the metal calipers just to check size. The calipers can help you exactly replicate sizes and lengths really great tool to have on your bench at all times so now that i've got both sides kind of where i want it i'm going to even out the whole thing try to even out these wall weights so i have a nice fluid wall weight there you can see i've taken that skinny piece of glass and i've expanded it into the general shape i want everything looks good So the top part, I'm just going to add a little heat and expand a little bit more and just even out this wall weight just a little bit more. Near that handle there was a little taper and a little unevenness in the glass wall. So I even that out and then I ripped off the handle. Now I'm going to pick and roll all the clear off that I don't want to be in the finished product. And there I'm doing a termination couple picks and way out in the back to melt it in if you put that termination right in the flame right when you do it you're gonna boil the color so as soon as I pick that color out I jump to the back of the flame and I bring the termination slowly back towards me now I'm gonna round the bottom of this out so I have a nice consistent wall weight through this whole piece of glass before I start any shaping So now that I have that bottom rounded out, I'm gonna take the whole thing and I'm just gonna try to even it out a little bit more. You can see here the glass is really hot, it's flopping around, but that's gonna allow you to get a nice even wall weight. You can kinda of see it there. Nice, real nice even wall weight through the whole piece of glass. Couple puffs of air, even it out. Boom, nailed it. So the calipers that set to the bottom of the shot glass. So now I have my size set on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this using a paddle. There's a couple different ways to do this. I'll show them to you both. You can do it off the roller like this.
and you can also use the L Marver. You can see I got a nice flat bottom there. So now I'm going to grab that piece of 16 that I prepped. I'm going to clean it off, make sure there's no kiln dust. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get that 16 just ripping hot and I'm going to add exactly how much glass I need for the base of the shot glass. And it's really important to focus most of your heat into the 16 and just a little bit of heat into the bottom of the glass. If you, if you have too much heat into the bottom of the color, the bottom of what is going to hold the liquid, you're gonna push up a little dome into there and it's gonna create an acute angle that's gonna wanna crack later. So it's really important that you keep the bottom of the inside of that glass square. So here you can see I've added the material for the base. So now I'm just gonna get that ripping hot and I'm gonna use the L Marver to shape it out along with the bent, the bench roller and the paddle. And again, I'm focusing all the heat into the clear that is gonna be the base. I'm not trying to put any heat into the tubulated piece of glass. Because once you start paddling this, it is possible to push that clear up into the tube, which we do not want. And here I'm just using the roller to get that hot glob straight. And now I'm going to use the L Marver and the paddle and create a little block there to flatten the bottom. And I want this just to be slightly tapered so when I flare out the shot glass, everything has a nice even taper to it. It's going to take a couple heats. Again, being real careful not to push that clear glass up into the tube. It's just being deliberate with your heat bases. See how I have a nice flat seal there? If you get that dome on the inside of the tube and that acute angle, it's really hard to get out, but you can take a look, you know, get it hot, puff it a little bit. So here I'm using the roller to kind of shape it. Now I'm jumping back, just flipping on and off the links to the mirage adding heat as needed there i'm giving it a couple puffs just to ensure that there's no acute angle on the inside Couple puffs, just round that inside out. Couple final little shapes here. You can see it has a nice little taper and it's the exact size that I want it to be. So now we're gonna take all the tool marks off there and we're gonna handle up with some six mil to the bottom of this so we can open the other end and flare the shot glass out. So I'm just cleaning up the six mil handle really good. And obviously you want this as centered as possible. We're gonna take this to the roller and use the jacks to flare it a little bit. So I'm building up just a little bit of a moil there. Make, make sure you have a nice good hot seal. You don't want a cold seal here. It has potential to fall off while you're tooling it. So I'm doing a nice hot seal, something that's going to be bomb proof and it's going to stay on there. I'm going to go back to the little laser flame here and just make sure everything is really tightened up with this seal. If this doesn't go right while you're tooling the shot glass open, it could break off, fall off. So just making sure everything's perfect here.
drop it on the roller and make sure it's centered. <clears throat> so you can see the basic shape starting to take form and you can see the little moil on that six mil handle. That's just gonna leave me a little more to pick off at the end. Ideally, you're gonna come in and just stick that one seal, but it doesn't always go as planned, so I had to go and thicken it up, but it's just a little bit more glass to remove at the end. Not really a big deal. It's more important that that seal to the bottom of the shot glass is solid. So here I'm gonna use the metal calipers. I'm gonna take some measurements off the shot glass I'm replicating. And there I'm just looking at how far I'm going to have to expand the glass to and how tall I want the shot glass to be. So as I'm working it, I'll have some reference to where I'm going. I'm not just shooting in the dark on sizing. And once you make a ton of these, obviously you probably won't have to caliper them. Haven't made one in a while, so I'm using the calipers really to dial in my sizing. And here I'm really just trying to add nice even heat bases in and work the wall weight out to a really nice even shape. And you can see I set just barely set a taper in there. Keeping everything on center on the handle. You can see the ruby slippers is kind of struck there under the clear. That red again won't come back till about an hour in the kiln at 1050. So I'm gonna do one more big heat just to even this wall weight out. And there I'm kind of using gravity to flip the, the glass back and forth as it's falling from side to side. And then the L Marva works great for rounding out a shot glass. One last little puff, make sure everything's solid. So I'm just doing some final heats just to really even this wall out, getting the whole thing hot, rounding it out in the L Marva, giving it a couple puffs get that wall just really really even check in size check in length everything's looking pretty good so the next thing I'm gonna do is open this thing up and I'm actually gonna seal it up and I'm gonna use the air pressure that builds up inside the sealed up part to pop a hole this is pretty tricky all you have to remember is to keep heating the piece of glass. If that air inside the sealed up part is hot, it's going to expand and it's going to push out. So I'm going to pick a thin spot right in the front and then I'm going to heat the whole glass up and it's actually going to force a little hole right out of the front. And there you can see the hole just pops out. Now I have a nice perfectly centered hole that I can then go in and expand to a nice round opening using the jacks. And I'm going to do this in a lot of steps. It's not going to happen all at once. First I'm going to bring the hole just open a little bit so I can get both points of the jacks in there. Again, little steps. You don't want to get this whole thing hot. Jam the jacks in there and try to do it in one. Gonna open it up, get both the jacks in there. Open it up a little bit more. And as I'm doing this, I'm adding a little more heat into the, the whole shot glass. And now I'm using all of the jack up inside there to get a nice flat inner wall and you can come out on top and kind of make sure it's not flaring out too much as well so you can work from the inside to the outside with those jacks and 
and there you can see that that hot glass is just conforming <coughs> to that straightness of the jack. Here, I'm just gonna make sure the top is nice and square. Oh, no, never mind. One more adjustment. Make sure everything's nice and perfect. So you have a nice little taper all the way through the wall down into the base. And now I'm gonna square out the front of the shot glass, <clears throat> which it looks pretty good but a little touch with the paddle just to make sure it's square. Good little touch. And there I'm looking over my glasses. It's always good to inspect your glass as you're working. Everything looks good here, so now I'm gonna rip that six mil handle off using the claw grabbers to grab it the claw grabbers are metal if you twist them in there they will scratch your glass so you want to be gentle here and make sure you're focusing a lot of heat into the glass you're trying to remove if that glass is kind of warm and not wanting to move you're gonna spin that shot glass in the claw grabbers and potentially leave some scratches so the key is really just focusing a lot of heat into the glass you want to remove. And here I'm gonna give the bottom a close to final shape, you know, baby steps once again. I'm not just gonna get this hot and flatten it on the marver. I'm gonna get it as close as I possibly can. And then here we're gonna start using gravity to flatten that bottom. <clears throat> and you don't want to add too much heat here because you will get a little bulge out at the bottom and you won't have that nice taper. So it's really important that you're focusing all your heat right where you want it in the bottom. If you get too much of that clear hot, when you go to flat in the bottom you're gonna get a little bulge right at the bottom where it's hot I'm not really pushing I'm just letting gravity pull this thing down into the into the plate and there it is finished shot glass and now it's gonna have to go in the kiln for about an hour <clears throat> at 1050 to 1100 degrees to get that red rich red color in the ruby slippers to strike back you can see in the bottom it's already starting to come back just from some residual heat but uh it's ready to go in the kiln and strike thanks for watching the video here is the shot class that i made in the video this is a new north star color called ruby slippers cool pomegranate base sparkle and I just wanted to explain a little bit how I like to finish the bottom you can see I have this other one that I used in the video for sizing I like the dimensions so I used the caliper to you know grab some sizes that I liked off of it they didn't come out exactly the same but I think I like the height on the ruby slippers a little bit more but back to finishing the bottom this one just went to the lap wheel and it went to like a 600, I wanna say. I didn't even take it all the way. I think it's fine. It just helps it sit a little flatter. You can get this close, but it's never gonna be perfect where this will sit perfectly flat on the table. So if you have a lap wheel, definitely go just flat in the bottom and you should be good to go. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one.